Hello and in this CSS3 tricks video we're going to be going over a cool little transparent border effect. So I've been overusing the hell out of it recently hence I've created this responsive design page over at test.devichki.net slash responsive design um, where I've pretty much used it just absolutely everywhere. I have it around the ads with this cool little bubble effect which I might show you how to do sometime. I've used it in all the main content divisions and now my browser's lagging up for no apparent reason. There we go, come on. I've used it on the footer. I've used it everywhere on this page uh, on this nice little patterned background. And, oh yeah, I did that effect. I forgot about that. <laughs> the little things. And I also use it on this test page here where we have these little bits which are pretty much... Uh, these concepts were copied from Chris Coyer's uh, CSS Tricks website, which is a really, really cool website. Uh, he doesn't actually have these little things on there anymore. They're part of the old design, but I thought they were really cool, so I tried to recreate those. But anyway, let's actually get on to creating this effect ourselves. So to start off with, I've just created a basic HTML document and linked it to a CSS document. And in the CSS document, I just have some simple body properties, include setting the background to a stripy background. And again, I'm going to have to give credit to Chris Coyer for that. Uh, Chris Coyer, Coyer, I never know how to pronounce it. But he created this stripy background for his new CSS tricks layout, and I pretty much just uh, changed the colour slightly, and I, I use it for quite a lot of stuff now. So credits to Chris for that. Anywho, let's get started. I need to stop giving credits to Chris. Uh, so let's get started. Yeah, div. So we're going to just create a div with an ID. I can't type today, apparently. Um, ID of main content, I don't know how I'm screwing this up so much, there we go, and let's just write something in here, let's just put some lorem text in there, that should do the job, and let's give it some basic styling I guess, I think I call it main content, if I didn't spell that wrong, and let's just give it a background of white, which it'll have by default anyway, but oh well, and a height of, let's just go 50%, and width of 40%, and what else do we need it to have? Just see how that looks on the page. Oh, I know what we need to do. So that's just like that in the corner. Let's just give it a margin of zero auto to just get it centered. Or in fact, let's go ahead and change it to 50 auto. So that's just to explain that, it's going to be 50 pixels top margin, 50 pixels bottom margin, and the left and right margins are going to be automatic, hence it's centered on the page. And okay, that's pretty much what I'm looking for, just slightly off the top. Maybe let's just put that up slightly. Maybe 100 pixels. Okay, cool. And let's just have one little thing. Let's also have some padding. Or 20 pixels. Okay, cool. That's much better. So now we have this nice little white box in the middle of our page with the stripy background. Let's go ahead and add the transparent border effect that I just keep overusing. Absolutely, 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 is what I was trying to say. Absolutely everywhere. So start off with what we're going to want to do is we're just going to want to let's just give it a box shadow first. So I'm just going to use a text expander macro there, and we have this. So we're specifying it for the WebKit vendor prefix, the Gecko vendor prefix, and just the regular CSS3 property. And let's just keep it on the settings that text expander has given me. Uh, let's just prepend, prepend, prepend pixels to those. It wasn't really necessary, but I think it looks nicer. So we have this box shadow, and it's got no X, no X offset, no Y offset, and 5 pixels of blur, and it's black. And let's just see what that looks like first of all. So we just pretty much have this box shadow. And next of all, we're going to use something that may be new to new, which is going to be the background clip CSS. I really can't speak today. CSS3 property. And pretty much, we actually um, do this slightly differently with different vendor prefixes. So the Gecko and WebKit vendor prefixes just use padding, but the CSS3 property use padding hyphen box, which is interesting. But, well, it's not really that interesting, but um, pretty much what this does is it's going to just stop the background at a certain point. Uh, in this case, it's just going to stop the background at the padding. Now, this will make more sense in a sec, so I'll go over this in a minute. So next of all, let's just create a border. Let's make it 8 pixels wide, uh, solid, and let's make it transparent. So this is pretty much our effect, just those bits there. So if we refresh, ta-da, we have this awesome transparent border. But let's just quickly go over this background clip stuff. So if we remove this background clip, we should see, let me just put my cursor before I reload, at the edge of where our border is, let's refresh and ta-da, you can see that our border has actually become white. And why this is, this is because our border is transparent and our background is white. 
Now without any background clipping, the background just continues underneath the border, hence transparent on top of a white background, our border is going to be white. So with background clip, it just says, okay, stop the background before the border, this way our border can be transparent onto the actual background or whatever's behind it. So in this case it is the background. So that's pretty much the heart of the effect. Um, I usually change these to some kind of RGBA color, so perhaps black with some opacity, 0.15 or 0.2. I think always looks quite nice, just like that. So that's kind of like a faint little transparent border. If you want to be more intense, we can just put the opacity of the box shadow up, because I'm not sure if I explained this, but pretty much if we remove the box shadow, our border is there, but of course we can't see it because it's completely transparent against the background. So the box shadow actually shows us that it, the border is there. So the more opaque we make the box shadow, so if we just set it to one, oops, if we set it to one, the more opaque we make the box shadow, the more prominent this border is going to be, like that. But I quite like having a little subtle border, so 0.2 is good for me. Just like that. Okay, so that's basically our finished effect. Um, once again, lots of credits go to Chris Coyer. Um, I pretty much just picked this whole method and technique up from his website a while back. I just view source and I go, oh, you know, that's quite a nice effect. And I just taught it away. And I decided to do a tutorial on it. In fact, he probably has a tutorial on it somewhere or a snippet up somewhere about it. But um, I just got it from his old source. So that's the end of this tutorial. It's a really cool effect. Uh, and I don't know if you'll ever use it for a while, but I've sure been overusing it for the last couple of uh, weeks or so. Really awesome effect. That's the end of this video, and have a nice day.